Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Learn History with Mahesh. So today we'll see a practical use of Google Cloud. So assume I'm a Android developer and I'm in a learning phase and I want to install Android Studio, the IDE, but I have a laptop which is not that powerful. So would Google Cloud be of help to me? So I don't know what is Google Cloud, why should I learn Google Cloud, but my use case is I want Android Studio. So on a specific operating system, in this case, it could be Ubuntu. So let's see whether Google Cloud will be helpful in this case or not. Let's get started. All right, we are in our Google Cloud console. So let's get started with the demonstration where we want to install Android Studio. So let me click on the hamburger menu or the navigation menu. Go to Compute Engine. So this should be of help for me in today's practical use case. So if you see here, the API itself is not enabled. So let me enable this. When I enable this, you will also see the VPC getting enabled behind the scene. So this is a brand new Google Cloud project. So let's enable it. It's going to take a couple of minutes for it to get enabled. Let's wait for it. So the API is now enabled because the API is enabled. One of the things which you would have also done is it would have created a VPC for us. So which is not important for this demonstration, but just wanted to highlight it. It's going to create a VPC called as default VPC. So now let's go to compute engine. Since you are going to use this very regularly for accessing your Android studio, let's pin it. So if I go to virtual machine now I'll get an option so this is going to be your literally a virtual laptop so the whole reason is your laptop is having is a low-end laptop low configuration so here we should be able to create it with a very powerful configuration let's go create an instance let's give the name as Android studio and I'm in Bangalore so I want to make my experience better when I'm interacting this is going to be a remote desktop so I'm going to choose the closest region for me is going to be Mumbai so any zone should be okay and the most important thing is I want a little powerful laptop so I'm using a free trial account here so in free trial account you can get up to 8 vCPUs free so what I will do is I'll go with N2 standard and primarily go with high memory 8 vCPU 64 GB RAM. So this should be really a good configuration. Then the most important thing is the boot disk. So let's change this boot disk from Debian which is a default one to Ubuntu. So And the version which we are going to choose is uh, 20, this one. So Ubuntu uh, 22.10. So we should be good with that. Since we want a better performance, I'm going to use SSD solid state disk. Let's make it as 100. So select it. This is the most important step. So that's it. Very simple. Give a name choose the region which is close to you um, so that you will have a better experience so you'll not see any kind of latency choose a very good configuration at least with free trial account you will get 8 vcpu easily you can go with that option and uh, choose the right operating system so because i tried this in um, ubuntu so it works without any glitch so that's the reason okay and we should be all good you can leave rest of the stuffs default now you may see the price like close to 800 and uh, close to 400 887 dollars now this is the monthly cost so if you plan it accordingly so assume you do a development once say for example two hours a day it's going to come down very less let's take the calculator so the one which is important is this uh, vcpu and memory so 459 divided by 30 days so every day it is going to cost me this 
now if i only use it uh, like per hour it's going to be this if i use it every day it is going to be roughly around 2.2 uh, dollars so even though i get a uh, 300 dollars of credit not every day i'm going to work on it so this much should be good enough so plan it accordingly whenever you need it keep it whenever you don't need it terminate the vm okay so with that let's go ahead and create it it's going to take a couple of seconds for the vm to get created let's wait for this and it's going to be super fast so as we are talking the instance gets created so that's what i would say and there could be situations where you may not get this vm created so try to create it in a different zone so because it's a little higher configuration try to create it in a another zone that should be good enough so the vm is almost there yes it's there let's ssh into it so once it SSHs into it we will go ahead and do some necessary installation all the commands i'll put it in the description so you should be able to get the commands and you can try it out so by the time this gets created so if i just go back this video is nothing but an extension of the video which i had created long back so let me just go here so if i go search for ubuntu So this is the video uh, which was created almost four years back. So it's the extension of that. So if you have already seen it, it's going to be good or you can look into this video. So the first command which I wanted to do is I'm going to put time in front of it just to show you how long it's going to take. First, I'm going to do the update the package manager. So since I'm in Mumbai uh, server, it's getting connected to the Mumbai nearest mirror and it's going to get installed. So let's just wait for it eight seconds is what it took okay so the next one is the remote desktop which i have to install so this could take around uh, two to three minutes is what i have observed let's wait for it so i'm going to pause the video but when it is clear finish it's going to show the time i'm going to show you the stuff to just to make the video short and crisp so the installation is completed it took around 90 seconds so let's clear the screen and let's install uh, which is a xfce which is a lightweight uh, desktop environment for all linux kind of operating system so again i'm going to pause this video and come back once it is finished this should take around two to three minutes that's it let's wait for it so the installation is done in almost like around 66 seconds we are good now we have to restart the uh, extended uh, remote desktop component so let's do that it's quick now let's go ahead and install android studio using snapd so that's also very quick so the last one which we are going to do last but uh, the the last last but the previous one is the android studio so i'm going to use classic mode so if you are a hardcore android uh, studio developer you should be able to know how to install the latest version the classic version should also be good enough is what i feel let's go ahead and install this this should take around two to three minutes the installation so let's pause the video and come back so the installation is completed and you can see it's, it took around three minutes roughly so let's move to the last part where we need to install uh, the jdk the java development kit which is very important so let's install that also so let's wait for this to be finished and this should not take much longer time it should be real quick um, so let's wait for it the last part which we are going to do is uh, change the password of the root user that's very important so everything is done so sudo minus so now i'm the root user i'm going to change my password to root then i'm all good all i need to do now is just close this and rdp using this external ip address let's do that all right i have opened the remote desktop so let's connect to this it's the same ip address let me give root and root as a password 
and you should see it is going to be super fast because I am in the same, almost close to the same, uh, in the same region, right? Bangalore to Mumbai. So let me launch the terminal here. I need to just type Android Studio. And if everything goes fine, I should be able to see it. Let's go click next or OK. And I have to, do you want to send usage? It's your choice. I don't want to send the usage. So let me click on next. So standard installation, next. I have to install some of the components. So let me just accept this part, this one also. And you see the experience is pretty fast. So this one, which you see uh, for the emulator, I'll be doing another video. So maybe in the next week. So how we can turn on uh, basically the accelerated performance. So we have some settings in the virtual machine, which we have to do it, which I'll show in the next video. So click on finish and it should take a few minutes for it to get finished. Let me just pause it for it to finish and then we should be all good. All right, the installation is completed. So let's just click on finish and you should be able to see the stuff. So if I create a new one, which one you want to create it, you should be able to do it. What kind of uh, stuff you want to do it, you should be able to do it here. So that's the video which I wanted to share. Thank you for watching.